your secrets if you really look at yourself you will be speechless what happened to being doctors and teachers what happened to being your brother's keeper nowadays kids more worried about the reason. what's up guys jano here and today fbl fantasy premier league we are on like episode six seven eight and the series has been doing great so thank you guys so much for the support please smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new and let's get into who I think we should all be keeping an eye on coming into this season who we might have to draft into our team. Now first off, if we look at goalkeepers, I think we all need to keep our eye on Jack Butland. He is not in my team right now, but coming in at 4.5 million, if he is the first choice keeper and that Stoke defence starts looking good, we should all be looking to get him into the team. Because that 0.5 million, if you find the few places where you can get that together, that's the difference between having a premium striker and having Aguero. So we should all be keeping an eye on Butland. And I think we should also all keep an eye on the goalkeeping situation at West Brom. If news comes out that Foster is going to take longer to come back, my hill may be the first choice for a prolonged part of this season. And if that is the case, that's another 4.5 million goalkeeper who is in part of a great defence have a great defensive record and we should be all drafting him in drafting him in if we can as for defenders who i think we need to keep an eye on we have players like Jan matt and moreno liverpool and newcastle respectively they have quite good attacking traits to their game so if liverpool and newcastle can get decent defensive records going and a decent run of form going they could be scoring big points for a while we need to keep an eye on them and keep an eye on Cedric Soares. He is coming in at 5 million, the cheapest option in the Southampton back line. If he starts off well, we should all be drafting him in, his price should rise and we should all be laughing. Midfield wise, if we go off last year, we have Eden Hazard, Sanchez and Silva. Those were the three midfielders that you needed in your team and they've been priced accordingly. But there are three options that could be just as big hitters as the three I've already mentioned. We are looking at Memphis Depay, we are looking at Raheem Sterling, and we are also looking at Theo Walcott. But those three are all midfielders that can score goals. Now Raheem Sterling may be played in an advanced position, either one of the three behind Aguero or in a diamond, we don't know for definite. That may push Silva out wide, and he doesn't get in the points as well when he's pushed out wide. So we have to keep an eye on that Man City situation. If Fear Walcott is played up front, that's an out of position player. Midfielder that plays up front, who's got an eye for goal, he could be an explosive option. So we should be ready to bring him in if we need to. And Memphis Depay has an amazing goal scoring record from the Dutch league that doesn't always convert. But people are talking about Depay as if he was the next Ronaldo or the next Messi or someone along that line. So if he brings that form, we need to be ready to draft him in quickly. He also has free kicks in his bag, so he may get the free kicks at Man United, which could help him get those points. Another player we need to keep an eye on is Dimitri Payet. If he brings in the chance created and the goals scored and everything he did in the French League, again, that doesn't always translate. But if he brings that in, in a West Ham side that is more attacking, he may be someone at 7.5 million that we need in our teams. So he could also be someone that scores a lot of points. But we have to keep an eye on these players because they could take a lot of time to adjust and then just be really strong in the second half of the season or they could be strong from the very beginning and then die off. So we need to be ready to act and act quickly. As far as strikers go, I actually think at the moment the playing field is pretty similar to last season. There's no big striking name that has come into the league that's completely new to the league that immediately turns your head. So I think premium-wise, you're still going to be looking at Aguero, you're still going to be looking at Costa, you're going to be looking at Kane and Rooney, and maybe Giroud, depending on if he keeps his spot. But those are the main players, the main strikers at the top teams. We have to keep an eye on Benteke, of course. If he plays well in that Liverpool side, he may be someone we need to bring in. Daniel Sturridge, of course, he could be coming back. So those are the general players that you look at anyway. And I don't think there's many new options out there. So I would say look at the Diafro Sacos 
look at some of the new players coming up uh, in the new teams like Bournemouth with Callum Wilson, and Troy Deeney at Norwich. But I don't actually think the options are that different than we had last year. But of course, you've always got to keep your eye out. James Wilson, for example, if he gets given games and suddenly starts scoring, he could be the next Harry Kane. So you need to keep your eye open. But forward-wise, I think the playing field's pretty similar. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been Fantasy Premier League with your man, JNO. If you've enjoyed the content, as always, you know what to do. And I'll catch you guys next time. See you later.